Hello everybody, so I'm doing a video on the Star Seeker 4 go to mount. Um so I've I've got to use it uh on uh September 9th, 2016. Um I just wanted to do a video to talk about it a little bit since there's not very many people who are talking about uh this go to mount. Um so it's probably going to be a long video, so hopefully you guys have a few minutes to listen to me rant about this go-to mount. So, um, it's very important that, um, if you get this go-to mount, hopefully you're not silly like I am, and, uh, know that you need to actually, um, find out some information about where you are in the world, meaning you're going to need to get your your uh, latitude and longitude, I think it is, or latitude, I can, never can, never can get that one straight. But anyways, you're going to want to get those, those coordinates for your area, and you want to get them in art minutes, as I believe is what they said, to have them in. Um, the go-to mount is very important to uh, have those credentials set, and your elevation, and, um, and make sure that if you're in daylight savings time or not in daylight savings time that you set that as well. Um, one thing that I noticed is apparently um, the go-to mount uh, doesn't save your settings as far as like your clock. And I think that they, I think that they did that possibly because of um, just like resource problems maybe because it would take up too much resources or... Oh, there was no way to to keep the information stored. Um, but for me, at least, um, the clock resets itself. So every night uh, that you go out, you have to manually set your clock um, up for the time that you're that 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 it is when you have it set up. So when you take your telescope out and you have it set up and you're ready to do your your two star alignment, um, you're gonna need to basically um, make sure that your time is correct on that and make sure that, like I said, daylight savings is is either on or off if you're not in those types of years, um, that time of year, I should say. Um, and uh, what else? Um, yeah, one thing that I, I I didn't I didn't think of, and you might actually find this out yourself if you actually take the time to read your manual, which is this paper right here. This is the manual, and I didn't read it. Um, I read it afterwards, and I noticed that there was this there's a section on the manual here, and I don't know if I can find it or not. Um, but it talks about how to. Uh, how to find your your objects in the sky. Um, trying to see if I can find it here. Um, here it is. It's on page 12 if, you're, if you got a, a, an English manual. An English manual. It's on the go-to star alignment. Um, almost all the way down to the bottom, it talks about use a high-power IP such as a 10 millimeter focal length eyepiece included with your Star Seeker 4. So if you got your Star Seeker, if you bought a Star Seeker 4 and you got the tube in as well, you're going to want to use your um, your 10 millimeter eyepiece, uh, possibly without a barlow lens, because if you if you get this this go-to mount like I have, I have mine for my um, Celestron Power Seeker 80 EQ. Uh, I, got, I didn't buy this mount. Um, it was given to me from the local astronomy club that I attend. Um, they were giving it away and it was donated to the astronomy club. Um, but anyways, so, um, you're going to want to use a 10 millimeter eyepiece. And one thing that, that happened with me is maybe it's my eyepieces that I have. Um, but, um, what I had, and it could have been a, a variety of things. It could have been that in the video I uploaded, um, I showed people how to use the manual, the, 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 uh, the remote somewhat. I, it wasn't a big detailed video, I was just showing some of the the, the fast uh, steps and a little quick look at the the remote on it. Um, 
but I made some huge mistakes that night because it was my first night taking it out, and ultimately I had a lot of issues um, doing finding my planets and uh, finding anything with it. I was completely off, so I wasted like a good percent of my night um, because I didn't have it uh, properly in focus. And what do you have? Yeah, um, I ended up using a twenty millimeter eyepiece, which was the GSO Superview Wide View eyepiece. And that was not good to do my my alignment with. Um, and then I found out later in the book, when I came inside after breaking things down and coming back in, I pretty much had called it a night and then came in and read the manual for a second and I came across the part where it said that it's recommended to use a 10 millimeter IP. So I was like, okay, well, I made a, po I made a post on astronomyforum.net and I was talking to some of those people um, asking them for, like, what was going on, if they could help me with, with settings. So they kind of, somebody was nice enough to give me um, some latitude and longitude, 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 or whatever, I cannot pronounce it, um, coordinates for my area. You can actually Google this yourself. You can Google um, what is my latitude and, and longitude. Um, and put in you know, one of these websites will pop up and you can fill in your either your city, your state, your country, your location in your country um, or your address and it'll uh, pull up uh, numbers. It'll be like it'll have numbers in a, in a period um, hopefully for you. Um, if it doesn't, I don't know what to tell you. Um, but uh, you'll you'll need those coordinates and you'll have to uh, do a little bit of research. You're going to have to do a lot of research. I can't really help with that because I even I'm still kind of new to that and I don't really know too much about that stuff. So you'll have to use Google is the best play. The best advice I can, I can give you is Google that information that I just told you, your latitude and longitude uh, for where you are. And by the way, I want to let you know now, um, if you, if you travel with this telescope from, from like a one part of the country to the other part of your country or another state or another Providence or well, I don't know what you call them in your, in Europe or whatever, but hundreds of miles away. Okay. I guess you'll want to have to reprogram that. So if, for example, in the U S if, if you're 3000 miles away from where you were before, you're going to have to re re get those coordinates and stuff. And that, that was just an example. So, obviously, if you're farther, really, really far away from where you're at, from where you have your telescope when you set it up, if you go out of that area, you probably will have to re-get those coordinates so that you're, you're perfectly aligned with it. Um, since my telescope is staying here, it's always going to have the same coordinates. The only thing I'm going to have to really change is the uh, daylight savings time. And um, always update the clock on it for what time it is when I take it outside. Uh, one thing I want to mention is is uh, my astronomy club president told me uh, that you cannot do a a star alignment during the day. So you have to have a star in the sky that you can actually see to do your alignment. However, um, I'm pretty sure that if you if you wanted to, I don't know why you'd want to do this, but you theoretically could is you can set the clock to say that it's like, you know, 10 o'clock at night um, when it's like 3 in the afternoon where you are. Um, and the 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 basically the go-to amount would think that that's the information because it doesn't have any way to get online. There's no, um, there's no GPS or anything like that. It's like it basically a star map. Um, it's basically like a star chart. Uh, it knows basically by the values that you set into it that if it's if it's you know september like it is now it does this summer and it's programmed inside of that to know that it's never going to change and if it does magically change um there's firmware that you have to get and that 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 i don't know anything about so i can't give you any advice with that you probably would want to contact orion or check out their support page. They actually have an information on the firmware. So if your telescope is, if your Starseeker 4 is outdated, you might want to check out the Starseeker 4 website at the Orion website. 
and make sure you have the latest firmware. Chances are, if you got your telescope new, they probably flashed your firmware with new, with the, with the latest firmware that they have available on their website. Um, but that's just the, the the firmware for many of you guys that don't know what a firmware is. It's basically uh, uh, software. It's the easiest way I can play it. Put it software that is inside of your go to into your go to mount your Star Seeker four, and it has either bug fixes that are that cause problems with the go to mount and they fix them or they updated the database for the constellations and all that stuff, the stars and all that stuff and fix little tweaks to here and there so that it performs better or something like that. And, um, it's a little, I don't know how you flash that. Uh, but I know that you have to have some type of USB cable that converts it into like some type of, um, uh, phone line cable it's a it's a special it's a special cable it's not exactly like a phone line cable that plugs into your your landline house um but it's it's similar to something like that it's, it's diff, different uh just a different port uh different, different plug sorry i'm it's it's uh 2 30 in the morning when i'm doing this video so anyways 11 minutes um i think that's all i could fill in for this video um I thank you for watching this video. Um, and um, if you have any questions for me, you can leave them in the comments below. I look forward to maybe doing some more videos in the future on the Star Seeker 4 um, and updating you guys with uh, how I feel about it. Right now, it's very nice. I will just say before I end this video, just to go a little bit longer. Um, I like the tracking that it has. It's um, it's very nice. It holds my Celestron Power Seeker 80 EQ really good. The one thing that I want to mention too is is the um, the mount. The only thing that is holding my telescope from taking a nasty fall one day is just a single screw. And I'm honest, I, I knew this ahead of time, but I didn't really think that this would be a problem. See, my concerns with this is, and hopefully if um, somebody or any of you know um, Orion or if anybody at Orion hears this, uh, maybe you can pass this forward, that if you ever make a, if they ever make a new Star Seeker go to mount, that they think about having a dovetail um, thing that actually grabs a hold of the dovetail. So you have to slide it in from one end of the, the, uh, the, the rail and then the only way to get it out is to slide it back out so it either goes in and out or that's it and it hopefully it has some type of locking mechanism so that the actual optical tube can't slide out if it's at a 90 degree angle that's my biggest concern um with the actual go-to mount at least with my telescope um i would be a little scared to, to use it with a, a more expensive uh telescope but i don't know why you would put an expensive telescope on a, a mount like this for um there's 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 better mounts that are would do better um but it's a very nice mount i i will say that um it's probably worth the money i haven't had a, enough time to use it to say for sure whether it's worth it or not um but i like the way that it it, it, it tracks smooth like it's a real smooth even at um times nine speed which is like the max speed that it can go at for like moving itself it was very very smooth and it's not fast so that it just bloop, out of the way it's not it's it's really it's really good enough that you can you, you almost could probably take um pictures really good pictures or or video i mean i guarantee you could do videos and pictures and probably you We'll see me doing that if it all works out. I'm a little worried right now about putting a phone on the go-to. I don't know if the go-to can handle it. And I don't even know if my telescope will be able to handle the weight. I will tell you that the actual phone mount that I use, which you can see in one of my other videos on my channel here, if you want to see them, is it's a little heavy. It actually weighs probably about a pound, and that's a lot of weight. Plus the phone, which was going to weigh another pound maybe. So it's a lot of weight for that go-to mount. So I don't know if the motor is going to be able to handle 
that extra weight to push it around or not. But um, one of these days, maybe I'll try it out. Um, but uh, I know there's something I'm forgetting, but I can't think of it right now. So I appreciate you guys for watching this video. You have any questions for me, you can leave them in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer them. Um, but be sure to um, Google your coordinates for where you are, your latitude and longitude or whatever it's called, and uh, get your coordinates and program them into the, into the, the, the go-to mount. And um, that's all I really can think about right now. I thank you for watching this video, and uh, hopefully it's helped you out a little bit. Maybe you found a little piece of information that you were looking for about the mount, about the mount before you buy it. And uh, thank you for watching.